Uh, since we are not having class on Monday evening, this making it three weeks that we have gone without having a full class, I decided that I should put together a video for you that will help you to get a better grasp on the things that you've already done in order to move ahead on to the next chapter. So, with no further ado and explanations as to why I'm doing this video, uh, let us start with looking at what you have just done or that what is due on this coming Monday or tomorrow, depending on when you watch this video. The text that I have in this screen is exactly what you should have at the this is the final product so this will be at the end what I'm going to do is go through the details and explaining why certain things work why they work how they work and um, this is specific to the repeated issues that some of you have already contacted me about one of the first issues that I heard about was continuing to change a CSS file and not seeing a change occur in the actual displayed HTML. Here is what your startup screen should look like. Well, not your startup, but the completed product. The main things I've heard issues are my logo doesn't show as you have right here. I'm having trouble with the shadows or the TH for 75th as a superscript. I'm not quite sure how to focus or italicize when the mouse rolls over. As you can see here, Jeffrey Tubin, his name becomes italicized as I roll the mouse over it also referred to as hovering and last is the centering of the footer so these are the items that I'm going to focus on okay for starts one of the reasons that some of you have told me that you are not able to see the changes that you make in your CSS display on your screen is because of what is referred to as file structure File structure is something that the book does refer to. However, it is something that I find students struggle with every semester. File structure refers to the order of where items are located. For instance, the logo. Your logo is in a folder called images. How do I know that? Because of this word images before a slash. When you see a word before the slash, that's where it's located, in a folder by that name. Well, when you're making changes in your CSS file, if your CSS file is saved right in the same folder with HTML, but you're following the instructions that tell you to put it in styles slash main CSS, whatever you name your CSS file, and you're not putting it in a folder called styles, then you will not see the change. That's what the file structure is that I'm referring to. Let me give you a quick show. But right here, the town hall, you see I have the C4 underscore index file. I also have a styles folder, and there's the C4 main. My speakers, well, I have their HTML files for their pages in here. Now that, to me, is unnecessary unless your site is huge. Personally, I keep all my HTML files on the out. And then these individual folders for different types of files outside of HTML. So, styles is going to be CSS. Images is going to have exactly that. My images, including my logo. Okay, now back to this. Okay, we know what it's going to look like. Okay, give it a second. There we are. Now, let's look at the CSS file for starts. We have two things in the CSS file that are new. For one, we have the ID, and we second, we have what's called classes. By the way, Command, Shift, or Control, Shift, H 
hides that little gray bar that was on the side, the sidebar. It also brings it back. So in the CSS file, to identify a class, you put a dot in front of it, period, shadow. And you're telling it that I want the shadow to be two pixels, two pixels, two pixels, which is the top, the right, and the bottom. Now, if you did not have these in there, the shadow would be under the letters, but it would be perfectly under them, so it would be invisible. Nobody would know there was a shadow there. So the two pixels says it shifts out two pixels to the top, two pixels to the right, and two pixels to the bottom. Whereas, truthfully, a shadow would only, could only take two of four sides. It would probably be more accurate to do that, to put a zero. So the top would be zero, the right and the bottom would be two. Okay, so that's just there's your shadow, and there's the command for the shadow. In addition to showing that, I want to explain to show you something that I discovered and that is if you highlight your color or the, the code for your color and hit command E it will give you a full display of color. Next we have our speakers. So the speakers have there's something specific to the speakers that are being done and that's the font size is being changed. So you identify them by giving an ID. So you may be asking, well, an ID and a class looks like you can do something to both of them. What's the difference? Well, classes can be used multiple times. In CSS, speakers and ID differ on one main thing, and that is the ID can be used one time. The class names can be used repeatedly throughout your whole website. So if there's something you think you just may be using again, then you make it a class. Uh, my nature is to make pretty much everything a class just in case I need to use it again. I don't really find another reason to use an ID. The reason they introduced it to you is because they want you to know, they being the authors of the textbook, that there are two different things. So they're introducing them. Let's do Command Shift H and unhide the side. And let's go over to the HTML. Now, here's the uh, next part I wanted to go over, the matter of the shadow. Since you wanted to give a shadow to the 75, 75th, it said you could put either span or you could, it could do span or em. EM, and EM is what I would go with only because they didn't cover span very well in this chapter, but they did cover EM. If you're still unclear as to it, as to its purpose, and you want to know, EM is pretty much just a place where you, an, it's an element where you can assign an attribute and a value without, it, without EM actually having an effect itself. EM stands for emphasize. Well, note that in your H2s, your H2s are already told to italicize. Well, EM is to italicize also. That's the emphasis. When it says EM for emphasize, that what it does is it automatically italicizes. So it's really just you're, you're just repeating yourself. Because if we go back to the C the CSS file, it'll say that the H2 within headers is to buy, be italicized and indented by 30%. So then you go, remember, that's the element, class is the attribute, and shadow is the value. Well, then shadow itself is given values in the CSS file. So we start off with that, and we put 75, but then we have to put the SUP for superscript for the TH. Close it, then close the EM. Remember, 
the element is the first portion of a tag like IMG EM uh, let's see link up here what's another good one to point out in in any given link to click into another page a is your element I also like that you can roll over um, an area like this and you can actually see the image if it pops up if the image pops up it's working so it gives you a pretty good indicator of what is working and what isn't working uh, let me see I have I only have two JPEGs in here no I've got three I have two at 75 also let's go back to the CSS file and look and see what the next step is to be to, in order to make the links work because we've already talked about the CSS side and the HTML side of making the shadows appear for 75th I kind of break these up to make them real easy to read and so I spread things apart so if yours does not look the same or a line doesn't come up to the same number don't worry about it it's um, my OCD is kicking in so I've, I've arranged it to where it's crisp clear for me especially when I'm trying to explain something so I'm going to do command shift H again and go to my CSS file Okay, now we the next thing we wanted to do is we wanted to make these over here on your left side of your as you can see the Jeffrey Tubin and all these people you wanted that to be italicized you start with a a is your element remember what we said the first component of a tag such as a space href which would take you to a link or create a link that's the element so you notice you've got element body you've got the element header you've got the element section the CSS you're only identifying the element you do not use the attribute and values in here unless the value happens to be a class or an ID but we look at a that's a link colon focus we want it to focus and then comma when you do when you're doing multiples font style italic whatever you do do not do this italicize when it turns white or it turns a color that looks like all the plain all of the plain items on your screen and that means there's something wrong with that when you see it do something of this sort depending on the theme that you selected there will be a continued a consistent color that will go along with the numbers the style and so forth and those items will have that color that you want to look for when you see those that are off such as Arial and Helvetica it doesn't mean they're wrong it's just that these are names of a specific font family and that kind of throws things off sans serif is the overall name of Arial and Helvetica Helvetica is more is a specific font Arial is a specific font sans serif applies to both of these I kind of got off on a rabbit trail but let's get back here onto this trail of the hovering so now that the A is focus and hover and so forth that is what makes it work you're telling it that every link when you put it here you're saying every link within my page or every page every page that refers back to the CSS file will have the same reaction of rolling over and have and italicize the second roll over why do you want to do that I really don't know it other than it was part of the exercise now next um, notice how you have h1 in this area 
and then you have header one down here and they're two different sizes you have header two and it's italicized why is that header two different than this than than any of the header two that you've used or the header one different here's why because you've said if it's in I'm, I keep calling it header one it's h1 it's because they're within the header um, elements open and close let me show you right here header h1 h2 if they are outside of these if h1 is used outside of this they will be different if they're within they will indent 30 pixels they need to indent 30 pixels because as you can see there's a logo they need space for the logo so these need to be indented it, then they need to be indented equally so they'll line up properly if by chance in your HTML file you had your header open and closed it further down then you'll have multiple indentions and your text will look like it's out of order or look scrambled disorganized now this works the same with this is paragraph so paragraph should be pretty simple right right here we have the paragraph tag however some of you have asked me already well how do I get the paragraph tag to center my footer back to the footer well how can I make the footer line up well the way you make the footer centered without making this centered is that you go back to exactly what we did before and you specifically would say something like footer space P then the curly brace so what we've done down here footer space P for paragraph curly brace text hyphen align colon center and then close the curly brace now you could be asking but, well, but why are you showing me all of this since this this is my homework assignment I'm showing you this because I want you to understand what you've done. I'm not showing it to you to give you all the answers so that you can um, just do it and then be done and write it off. If that's what you do, that that's your call. Um, if you want to really learn this, then you will take the information that I'm giving you and, a, and try to process it so that you can it can be yours in a sense of speaking um, last thing I want to point out is just one of the examples of where h1 is different San Juan, San Juan Joaquin Valley Town Hall right here within the headers is that size as h1 the h1 as our mission is tinier right here right here this side that's that's the big difference is all you have to do is specify well all h1s are going to be this but all h1s within the header elements will have this size with no further information i believe that's that's the complete that's that's all of it that I wanted to show you. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to call on me. Uh, tomorrow would be an especially good time to do it since we don't have class. Uh, Any time after that, um, you know, like Tuesday through, uh, set up an appointment with me and I'll try to make a time to meet. Now, beyond that, um, I only have one more thing to show you and that is a website called let me see here Udemy U D E M Y dot com. This has some free HTML CSS tutorials. Uh, some are very well built and quite thorough. Um, 
some go beyond what we do some are uh, enough to get you to tease you and get your attention and say okay pay to pay you can have the rest of it if you, if you want the rest of these you have to pay but these are the free ones that I found um, there are a lot more of them on this site it's just that they're not all free and uh, on Moodle chapter 5 the next chapter's homework is already set up Chapter 5 will be what you start on next. And then I have gone and I have moved down the show What You Know. I've already moved it down to February 23rd. Since we continue shifting, know what you know, uh, show, to show what you know, you should be quite ready. What I was going to do in class tomorrow would be to show you how to transfer your files onto the web. We will be doing that next Monday. So that you can do the show what you know in class as when I was gonna when I intend on having you do it. Work on show what you know. You will have about an I will give you about I think seventy minutes to do it because I think you can at least if you've been keeping up with everything you are at you will be able to and then uh, if it does seem to require more time for everybody then I will extend the time as for now that's all I have so thank you very much and you have a good day try to stay warm tomorrow and um, try to catch up on things Thank you. Bye.